Welcome. My name is George Pearson and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos on my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques that you'll find in different software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video though is different. This is one in a series of longer project demonstrations that I'm doing that show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish such as changing this background or adding in these swirls or changing hair color. All the images I use in these are public domain and you'll find a link to the pictures in the description if you want to work along and follow my demonstrations. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the project. In this Photoshop project we're going to clean up this picture in here. I'll be leaving the girl We'll get rid of the part of the boat down here. We'll get rid of the boat engine in the background. And of course, we'll do the hard part, which is to remove this guy standing right behind the girl. Let's just examine this and see where the problems are. No problem over here. That's easy. That part of the boat, that's a, that's a cinch as well. The problems are removing this guy in the background. Now, the stuff in here filling in the background with some of this coastline and some trees, not a big deal. The problem is going to be along the edge here with the girl. And this part of it is actually pretty easy. But right here we have some of her hair over his blue shirt, medium blue shirt. That's going to be a bit tricky. And right here we have part of the fishing line. Let's take a look at this. That's fishing pole rather. I'll zoom in a little bit on this. You can see that better. There we go. So we have the hair in here that's tricky and this bit that's a little bit tricky everything else is pretty straightforward we should be okay on that and the hair up here it looks like it stops right at his hairline so that should be fine I'll just you know trim that right in there now the way we're going to approach this is going to be using some standard tools for creating selections and then we'll be using the clone stamp tool for most of our repair work that should work out just fine on this particular picture. Now before I do anything else, I want to make a copy of this layer. I'll take the layer, drag it down to our new layer button right down there, and we'll work on this copy of that. That way I have a protection. I can always go back to my original if I need to, to grab part of that picture or whatever. So it gives me a protection on that. So it looks pretty good. As we come in, we're just going to be clone stimming right on top of this image. And this start some work. We'll start off by getting rid of the stuff out here. This is the easy stuff. I can just do this directly here with a clone stamp tool. Let's just bring our clone stamp up a little bit. I like a pretty good size for things like this. I'll just be taking some of the water here and just dumping it down there. Hold the Alt key down. Choose a position to clone from and then pull that down here and then just clone in like that goes away pretty nicely and same thing right in there there we go no one's going to be noticing that maybe a little bit more of this blue color there just kind of blend things in a little bit better okay that one's taken care of let's now do the same thing over here i'll take a little bit of the stuff right here and we'll pull that over Notice I'm getting a bit of the top of the engine again there. That's fine. We'll, we'll fix that. What I want mostly here is just some of this stuff so that that edge matches. Everything else I can do with the stuff over here on the left-hand side. So I'll clone stamp there. And let's just bring some of this in here. And one more shot on that. Pretty good. Just a little bit of touch-ups in here to hide some of this duplicated material. So I'll grab right there and do that. And I'll grab over here, move it right in there, grab some of this else. And maybe up here, there we go. Just a little bit over that stuff. Okay, so those are gone. As I said, that's the easy part of the process. The hard part is going to be along this edge in here. So let's begin by making a careful selection. And we'll leave a couple things for later. I'll be using the pen tool for this. You can use any tool you want to 
you know, lasso tool, polygon lasso tool, magnetic, whatever you find easy to use on this. This for me is, is a pen tool technique because I want to be able to come back in here and make adjustments afterwards. I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see this pen tool a little bit better here. There we go. Back to our pen tool. I'll start outside just, just off the leg right there. And then I'm going to come in here and just do just a slight pull on these. As I'm doing this, that gives me, gives me a curve instead of a straight line. The curve is going to be better for this. And I can then come back in and adjust that curve if I need to. There we go. Now what we're going to be doing here is using the pen tool to create a selection and use that to protect the girl's image. So after you make your path, just click on selection up here. That then converts that path into a selection. I think right here I'm just going to do a click and make that a point. And I'll do a curve here. And this does pretty straight so I can just do a couple of point clicks in here. So if I want a a straight line, I'll just do a click. I'm using the scroll wheel right now to scroll up. And that's pretty straight, just a click. It's a slight curve, so I'll come over here and I'll just pull it a little bit, giving me a little bit of a curve to work on. And there's a curve right there. So I'll come right here and pull. And then a click there for that corner. Here's a curve, so I can come over here and pull on that giving me a curve. That's a curve, I think right to here. There we go. And again, we'll be coming in and adjusting those curves. Now to do a nice selection, you want to take your time and Create the best selection that you can. I'm just clicking up here on these. Doesn't really need to have much in that area. Now I'm not going to be showing you the whole process here for making this selection. I'll just do part of this and then I'll finish the rest off just because it, it is complex. It will take me a little while to get it really well done. So I'll show you parts of that as we move further forward. For this, I'm going to save that for later. Let's just click around like that and we'll come back to that later. And then let's just carefully do this fishing pole. I don't need to worry about that. That's okay. Now let's come up into here someplace. This side is pretty straight. and back down to here again. So you see the idea, just coming in and putting in some control points. I can convert the points to curves later if I need to. Now again, this is the tricky part, so I'm just going to save that for later. I'll come out like that, and then I'll come a little ways in here and just cut a little bit of her hair off right there. There we go. So that gives me that whole side of her figure. And all this finishes up around here a little bit quickly. I don't need to be worrying about this side. This side's taken care of. Doing this like this, just a real rough mask. This is called making a garbage mat and or a garbage mask. Bring around to the finish. There we go. There is that finished path. Now to carefully adjust that, let's go over here to our tools. We have our path selection tool. There's the path. And we have our direct selection tool. Right there, we'll be using that. And I'll do a couple of these so you can see what it is that I'm doing. Let's just zoom that back out just a little bit here. and click on the path, I have these control handles because I made those as curves. So I can then pull those handles around 
and I can adjust that path until I get it exactly where I want it. And that's the nice thing about using this technique is that I can be really precise on where this path is going to get a very, very tight, very, very clean shape, which I can then use for my selection. It's going to line up in a knot there. I'm going to pull that out so you can see that. There's that bit of a knot I'm getting. I'm going to remove one of these points. Let's go up here and delete anchor point. I'm just going to get rid of that one right there. That should smooth that down a little bit. That's better, a little easier to, to work with. So you can you know, come back in, put in points, take out points, whatever you need to get just the shape that you want to get real nice clean selection. Okay, I'm going to finish up the rest of this adjustment with a pause on the video so you need to watch me just doing all the kind of touch up and I'll go through and I'll just touch up all these lines and make sure that I like the selection. Once I'm happy with those lines with the placement on that figure, then I'll bring the video back up again. Okay, it took about 10 more minutes and just kind of carefully adjusted those edges in there so it's where I want. Again, this doesn't matter at this point. We'll come back and, you know, that, that side's fine, so that, that's okay. So let's just convert this to a selection. Go back over here, choose the pen tool, and selection. You can choose a feathering radius if you want to. I'm going to leave this at zero on that no feathering. Choose OK. And there we go. That gives us a nice selection. Again, we'll take care of this little bit and this bit later on. Now I need to reverse this selection, but first I'm going to save that. I took some time on that, so let me just save that selection. Call that girl one. There we go. Now I want to be working out here and not in there, so let's invert this selection. Click on inverse, and we now have the outside selected as you can see up there. So that's what I can work in, and this is protected. I can prove that here. I'll just grab a paintbrush. You can see there, that's now protected. Okay, let's undo the brush tool. Let's go over here to the clone stamp tool. We'll use that. There we go. There's our brush. I'll readjust this brush size a bit, so it's a little bit smaller. That looks pretty good. We're now going to copy over here. I'll copy from this area of the sky and we'll just paint out the background fisherman there. Hold the all key down, choose a spot on the sky right there, and I'll just come in here and paint in some sky. Don't worry about that yet. That's fine. We can just adjust that in just a second. Another clone stamp, and let's get a little bit more of that. Make sure we're good and clean. And then out here. And I'll paint them down right down just below the tree line right there. Okay, so that part is gone. Let's get rid of our fishing rod over here. I'll clone stamp from right there. This one's fairly easy because it's a, a pretty even sky, making this fairly easy. All right, so the sky part is taken care of. Let's now get rid of the rod in here. It's going to be a little bit of back and forth stuff. Just some clone stamping and matching of the area. You want to have this top of the trees in there. There we go. Kind of fake that in. Luckily with a tree like this, it's pretty rough. So I can choose little bits of that and just do several passes in here. And then I'll go back in and 
clean up anything which looks too recognizable. Okay, so there we go. Now I need to get a little bit of a tree edge up in here. I'm going to grab some of this and let's bring that tree edge right in there. And a little more right there. Okay, that's pretty good. Have our trees in. We have the shoreline here. I'll just grab some shoreline right from about there. And let's just pull that over. It'll take a few shots to get this right. Make sure you have the shoreline lined up properly. If I zoomed in, of course, this would be a bit easier to do. Like I was a little bit off there. Let's just undo that clone stamp and zoom in on that. It's a little tricky. Zoomed out. There we go. A little better. A little easier to see. Grab that line there and let's just pull that across. That's pretty good. Now we're getting a nice even line. Let's have some duplicating up here on our trees. We'll, we'll have to take care of that. And then let's begin to paint out the rest. Now notice I, I'm paying attention to these lines in here. And trying to get some of those wave lines to match. Like right down here I want to take some of this stuff here, pull that over, match up those wave lines. So as I paint that in, it's going to be, you know, it will look natural. Luckily, wave lines do tend to repeat themselves, so it's not that critical in this area. We'll do a little bit of additional adjustment there if it's needed. But the same thing again, you'll know, match your lines up. There we go, try to make it look at as natural as possible here. There we go. And get the pants out. So at this point it's it's pretty straightforward. Just a little zoom out there. And try to finish off Okay, looks pretty good. I think happy with that. Now, of course, the trees back there, that's that's looking pretty bad. So let's come in and do a little bit of clone stamping here to fix those trees. I'll need a smaller brush. I just need to get some random foliage happening there. So I'll pull my random foliage from up in this area here. And I want to get some things that have some detail to them. sharp easy to see detail there we go so that puts in some randomness in there that looks better and zoom back out so we've now removed that fisherman except for his legs down here we have that gone the boat is gone let's finish off this last little bit and go back to a larger Larger stamp, that's pretty good. I'll just grab from right over here. I'll click to grab that area and then let's just paint out the rest of that. Okay, so he's gone. This little line there is kind of weird looking. I'm just going to get rid of that just to make things a little bit cleaner in there. Nothing really to be focusing on. Okay, so far so good. We're just about there actually. All we have left now is this tough spot. There's a little bit of a glitch right there. Let's just clean that out as I notice it. I'll click and get rid of that. There we go. One more thing I just spotted. There's this fishing line up in the sky up here. So we can just do the same thing. So a lot of this, as you can see, is just paying attention to what's around the image and 
making sure you aren't missing anything. There we go. But because of this nice random background, it's pretty easy to paint that out. So that all looks real nice. All we have left now are the hard parts. And that's this bit up here with the hair and that bit around that part of the fishing pole. We'll tackle that one first. Let's just deselect, select, and then deselect. Okay, so taking care of this, we can use any of our selection tools to clean this out. Let's do something a little bit different here just to show you another technique. Let's grab our elliptical marquee and I'll create a marquee on that. I'm on the right background, that's fine. Ah, I see the problem. Feathering is set at 25 pixels. Let me just set that to zero. There we go. Okay, that should now work just fine. So I'll do a little marquee and go up here to select and we're going to transform that selection. There we go. So I can now use these different control handles and actually adjust this marquee including spinning it and resizing it until it fits around that perfectly. It's a little bit of a give and take process to get this just right. That's pretty close. So this is one approach to coming in and getting rid of something like this. Just create a little marquee, little selection. I'll apply that transformation. There we go. I can now use my clone stamp tool out here and this will be protected if I invert that. There we are. So let's go ahead and grab our clone stamp tool again. Bring the brush size down a bit. And I'll select out here. And let's just bring that in and we'll clean up this outside a touch. There we are, just a bit. So you can use your elliptical marquee tool that way if you want to, to come in and do this kind of cleanup. Let's do something a bit different now. I'll just switch tools and let's deselect that. I'll use my polygonal lasso tool. So just using different tools in here. Again, just showing how it really doesn't matter what tool you use as long as you get the effect that you want. And you select what you want to select. There we go. Same thing. This is now selected. So I can come in here and I can clone stamp into that and everything else is protected. So I'll just alt click out here. And let's just paint in there. That takes care of that. Deselect. Same thing on this side. Just come in and do a little clone stamp into a protected area. And Alt key and select and then do that. There we go. We still have the middle to take care of. So let's go back to, I'll use this same tool. This works out pretty well actually for this particular shape. And just following along the edge in here. You know, I could have used the pen tool for this and did my selection that way. I could have you know, used other tools. I'm just using a variety here so you get a, a sense of what can be done. Okay, Alt and click and there we go and then deselect. Now there's still a problem here and that's that we have this kind of a bluish tint on this thing from the other fisherman's shirt. If we take a look at the next one that's up here, it's pretty pretty gray. It doesn't have that bluish effect. So I want to get rid of that bluish tint. We can do that over here. Oh, wrong tool. There we go. Sponge tool right there. I'm going to bring this way down in size. 
a little too far. There we go. What the sponge tool does is it takes away saturation. It takes away color. So I can now just paint right over this using this sponge tool and actually take away that color, take away that blue tint. Leaving it a gray tone is fine here. It, it will look like a perfect match. So that's the real key to this one is to desaturate that and leave it a gray tone so it matches our gray tone up there. Okay, that's good. Let's just back out a little bit. We can see how that looks. That's successful. It's a bit on the dark side still, though. See, these are pretty light. So let's just go one step further on this. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. And I'm going to use the Dodge tool and just take away some exposure on that. Again, using a fairly small brush for this particular picture. And I'll just dodge that out and lighten that up. So it's a little bit more like this one up here, so it's just a better match. I think that's pretty good. Okay, that part is done. That was a tough one, as you can see, but that's a good match now. All we have left is just the hair in here. This is a little bit trickier because of that rough hair. It's This is a JPEG picture. It's taken from a public domain picture that I found online, and there's a link for this picture inside the materials section, so you can download this picture if you want to work on the same picture yourself. So this was a JPEG. You can see we have a little bit of pixelation in here, so it's not real clean hair. It's not a real high-resolution picture and that makes this a little bit more difficult to fix. So we'll have to do some other tricks on this. Let's just zoom in. Okay, a little bit too much there. I don't want to see that pixel grid. Okay, first off, I'm going to use the clone stamp tool, fairly small size. I'll click, and I'm just going to paint in close in here. Just like that. Let's now bring my size down a lot further, down to about three pixels on this one. That's pretty good. And I'm going to make this much harder this time. So I can come in and actually come right up against the edge here. And using the clone stamp tool, I'm actually going to paint in very carefully. some of those streaks and just do a little bit of streaking. Let's take a little step further. I'm going to go right down just to one pixel and I'm just going to just add a little bit of softening in there like that just to kind of match our other areas up here. Now we still have that one problem. Again, I was painting in with the clone stamp tools. I was actually cloning from this area out here and painting it in. This is still the same problem. We have that blue in there. Luckily, her hair is fairly dark and it's kind of gray tones in here, so I can use the same desaturate trick as we used over here. So let's go ahead and go back to the sponge tool. And wherever it has that bluish tone to it, I'm going to use this and just desaturate that and get rid of that bluish tone. And then let's lighten that up a little bit with the Dodge tool, especially towards the edges out here. So they appear to fade off into the distance a bit. A lot of this is just eyeballing it as you can see to get this just right. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, let's zoom out. That looks fine. It's a little bit bad right there. I think we can make that a little bit better. Again, let's go back to our clone stamp. I just want to soften that edge up a little bit and break that up. That should do. 
Okay, let's set this out to fit on screen and there we go. We now have a nice clean picture. The boat is gone. The guy in behind here is gone. We used a few different tools for our selection and then some tricky techniques in here on the hair and on that one little part of the fishing pole to make this look real clean, real natural. So there you go. That is removing a difficult subject right behind somebody, including removing somebody who is in behind hair and in behind a real thin shape. I like to answer some questions at the end of these longer project videos. And I have a few here for this one. Now, I'm going to hide this good picture. Let's just hide that. Let's bring back our background picture. And I'm going to make a copy of this just for this little Q&A section. All right, let's say I am painting over this image in here with a clone stamp tool. Here we go. This one's pretty easy to see what's happening here, but this, this question has been asked before, so I want to point it out. And I'll copy some of the area over here and put it into there. So holding the Alt key down, I'll click in here, right about there, and I'll begin painting in here. You know, so far so good, I'm painting out that figure. But as I come further over here, you'll see at some point it begins painting back in the shape. You see it right there, actually painting him back in over here. So what's happening there is I'm painting from this area, but as I move over to here, I'm actually going over where his figure is. So when you're clone stamping like this, what you're really doing is you're moving stuff, copying from one area and moving it over to the side. And when you get to this point, you're moving that part over as well. So you just need to be aware of that and make sure that you don't go beyond when using this clone stamp tool beyond the figure. Let's just undo that again. So if I wanted to do that, I would do this in several steps using you know little bits of clone stamp and not doing, trying to do big full things. You can see it actually right here. Let me just bring the, the size of it and you can really see this effect. There we go. So if I was copying from here, I'll do an Alt key right there. There's my copy. And if I move over, you see it, it copies that over just fine. But if I go too far, you know, I'll begin moving into, there it is, you can see it right there, you begin moving into that figure because that's right where that is copying from. So just be aware that there's a good chance that that may happen. It happened a couple of times on me as I was doing this this demo and I had to make a couple of adjustments on that. So just keep, keep that in mind that you only have so much area here to copy from. No matter where it is you're copying from, you only have so much area to copy from and just watch out that you don't go into like that. You don't go into a figure or something else you don't want to copy. It just means you have to go back and recopy that section. Okay, the next question I have here, I've been asked this a, a few times, on my cursor, where do I get that little plus sign in the middle of the cursor, which I use to really pinpoint where I want to be copying from or copying to? That's simply an option under the edit menu. Let me bring the preferences up here. It's bottom of the bottom of the edit menu preferences, click on general, and right here we have cursors, and I have mine set at normal brush tip, which is the paintbrush size, and then show crosshair in the brush tip, right there. That's what I use, and on my other cursors I use it as precise. Now standard, you'll see the tool in both of those. I don't happen to like that, so I use mine at precise and normal brush tip with show crosshair in brush tip. So that's where that crosshair comes from. I think I had another question I wanted to answer. Let me look at my notes. Okay, why don't I use the healing brush tool on something like this instead of using this tool? That's because I, I want a, a real perfect match and I can find what I want to copy from and copy to and it's going to match exactly with the clone stamp tool. The healing brush tool tries to adjust the values and I found that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. So I'll use the healing brush tool more often if I'm doing something where I'm working on a skin tone and I'm retouching somebody's face. I found it works out very, very well in that kind of a scenario. On an outdoor scenario like this, I usually have a better effect with just the clone stamp tool. It's personal preference, but that's why I do that. 
okay, on the layers over here, why do I make a new layer? And I do this every single time. I make a new layer and I work on my new layer. The reason for that is if I mess this up, I can easily go back to my original and pull from that or make another new layer and start all over again without having to do any undo steps. So I can always go back to my original without damaging that. So I always make a copy of my layer and I work on the copy. Plus, when I've finished, I can go back and forth between those two and I can see how well that has worked and see if there's anything else I want to work on or anything else that I've missed. This looks like it's a pretty good pretty clean job to me. I think I'm, I'm happy with this one. So that's why I make those new layers. Now I frequently, if I take the time to make a real careful real careful selection around something, I'll save that selection. As you saw here we saved that selection up there. Load selection. And I save that one as girl one. Now there are different ways of saving selections. You can save it or you can make a mask from it and have the mask over here. I could have used a masking layer on these and done the selection into the masking layer. It's really just a personal preference, you know, which way you like to work better. I happen to like working with selections and saved selections. On some things that I do, I'll work with a lot of masks over here. But on this kind of an image, I just personally prefer using selections and saving my selections. Again, it's just a, a, a personal preference. It's up to you which way you want to approach that. They all basically do the same thing. Using a mask, of course, on here, working my selection with a mask would give me a little more opportunity for adjusting the mask and the shape, but that wasn't necessary since I was using the pen tool and I was adjusting my shape and my selection exactly with the pen tool, so I didn't need to go back and readjust that selection at all. It was already taken care of. Okay, so there we go, and that is how to remove background objects, even difficult ones, with somebody right behind somebody else. The real key and the question is if you're looking at a picture like that, if you have somebody in behind, the real question is not how to get rid of them. That's really straightforward. That's just doing careful selections. You, you can do that. The real question is do you have other stuff in your picture that you can easily use to cover them over with? If I didn't have other stuff, I couldn't do that. Let's say I had a group shot of a bunch of people in here and a person right behind her, then a person here, person here, person there, and so forth, I have a real hard time removing that person, especially if they were overlapping somebody else in here. You know, it, it gets very, very difficult on that kind of a removal. But if it was like this one, you know, a nice clean shot, you know, I have all these, these things to get rid of, but I have a lot of stuff to pull from in here to cover that person up with. So that's that's why how I do it in this direction. That's why I do this, this kind of picture. And that's kind of what I'm looking for on these shots when I'm deciding the technique. Obviously, the best thing to do if you can, get a clean picture to start with. And you don't have any of this stuff to worry about. But if, like I'm doing here, you're working with a public domain picture, most public domain pictures are not very good. There's going to be problems with them, and you will have to make some adjustments. And as you can see here, even with a difficult shot, with a difficult subject, you can clean that up and get a much better picture out of it. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.